This is Kenneth Branagh's follow-up to his wonderful 2017 65mm adaptation of Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express. Death on the Nile is another fabulous 65mm shoot, but does it come up to the superlative standard set by Orient Express? All will be revealed. Being as this is a 65mm production for 70mm release, this film should really have a 2.20 to 1 aspect ratio, but on the back it's listed as 2.39 to 1. The sound is Dolby Atmos, but this isn't an action film, so if multi-channel sound is the most important part of your home system, then this one probably won't set the world alight. The Blu-ray disc in the pack does not have Dolby Atmos, but a 7.1 DTS track. Also, the Blu-ray uniquely contains the extra features which are not available on the 4K disc. Image quality on the Blu-ray is among the best of any Blu-ray I've seen, and if you thought things couldn't get any better, then put the 4K in and you find out they can. The 4K has the most vibrant colours and the blackest blacks. It's not quite Technicolor, but it has that warm Egyptian look that's almost unique to the country owing to the light. I've shot Super 8 in Egypt, and even Super 8 does produce a very similar look. So it's something special about Egypt, and it's captured perfectly in this 65mm film. Overall, however, Death on the Nile is not quite as good to look at as Orient Express, which has a colder look. There isn't a particular scene in Nile that compares to the Wailing Wall sequence of Orient Express, and that sequence may well be unsurpassed for clarity on home video so far. Nile is certainly very sharp, and the fine grain film stock renders the film grain almost invisible on my system. However, there are plenty of special effects shots in this that are clearly done a far lower quality, and these do spoil the overall impact a little. The subtitles during the World War I part were in focus, unlike the 70mm print I saw at the Odeon Leicester Square. I can't explain what happened with the 70mm print there, but those subtitles were certainly not in focus, and so it does indicate that either something different was done for the 70mm print, or something went awry with the printing process from the 65mm negative that appears to have been struck from the 4K Video Master. As for the film itself, I don't consider it to be quite as good as Orient Express. Some of the characters are too modern, and they would not have spoken or behaved as they sometimes do. Also, the film has gone down the woke route, which grates for me a bit for a film supposedly set in 1937. And if I were to get extremely critical, I think the opening dance sequence, which has got some pretty sexy dancing, which I think the filmmakers were proud of, probably rightfully so, it's just they wouldn't have been dancing like that in 1937 in public, and I don't think they would have been wearing 1920s costumes. So something that I didn't like, but I can forgive it because it looks so good and it's all acted so well. There are changes to the original story, and the characters have been altered a bit. This, however, is understandable because the original 1978 version of Death on the Nile was so perfect. The cast alone in that 1978 film is among the best ever assembled, and the double act of Peter Ustinov as Poirot and David Niven as his sidekick Colonel Race is the best I've ever seen. And in that 1978 film, they did actually go to Egypt with the entire cast and crew to shoot everything that was required at each historic site. Now, this is that original film, as it first appeared on the home movie market. This is Marketing Film International's feature-length print, and it came out, I believe, in 1980. My mother loved it when we saw it at the cinema in 1978, and as soon as it was out on Super 8, the credit card came out and she invested in it. It was on eight 400-foot reels, and we've been screening this on the big screen ever since it came out in 1980, 1981. Can you imagine the impact that made being projected eight feet wide in your home? And we did have many shows. My brother and I each operated a projector. We had changeovers. And when the little circles came up in the top right hand corner to indicate the end of the reel was coming, the other person would be next to the next projector, ready to fire it on. 
as soon as the second cigarette burn, as they're called, came up on the projector that was running, the lamp went off, the second projector came on, running, lamp on, and you didn't even see the changeovers. So it can even be done with Super 8 when you're playing at cinemas in the home. Now the new film I don't believe actually went with the cast to Egypt but they did build sets here in the UK and they actually built a replica of the Temple of Abu Simbel and a complete mock-up of the boat, the steamer ship, the Karnak that goes down the Nile. Some of the most impressive sets ever built I would imagine. Don't exactly rival Cleopatra many years ago but they're not too far behind and they certainly do make an impact when they're on screen and must have given the actors and actresses something very special to work with to give more reality and realism to their performances. So yes this film may have a few flaws but it's so good to look at that I think it's worth a try. Younger people may not fully appreciate it and I say that because I didn't fully appreciate the 1978 film until I'd seen it a few times and was able to pick up all the little nuances. So do I recommend this one? Yes, it's going to be one of the best 4K discs you've seen. I don't know exactly where it would stand in my top 10, but probably around number 5 or number 6, because I don't really think it's as good as Tenet, Dunkirk and a few others. But I need to compare them directly, so I may be wrong. Whatever, it's up there. It's a top 10 disc as far as I'm concerned, and it is worth a try. Now getting back to the 70mm screening of Death on the Nile that I saw at the Odeon Leicester Square for which I put up a video about two months ago that did generate a good response in the comments with many cinema projectionists actually giving me their thoughts and it does seem that my conclusions of that seem to be correct. So it was taken from a 4K video master from which a negative was struck, a 65mm negative, and then that was used to strike the 70mm prints. And that would explain why it doesn't look quite as good as I remember 70mm prints of the past. Now I can't say that that's been confirmed, but no one has disconfirmed it, if that's a word. However, one comment that did come in to almost confirm it suggested that IMAX, genuine IMAX film, the 1570 film that is the excellence to which everything else needs to aspire to, apparently that was being struck now from 8K Video Master, or a negative struck from an 8K Video Master. Well, thanks to my assistant Roder again, good old Eric, and thank you very much for this, Eric. He's done a bit of research into this because he was even more horrified than I, I think, to learn that. And he looked into it, and that does not appear to be true. And he went through the credits on some of the great IMAX films of the recent past, thanks to Christopher Nolan, and indeed they are still being shot and edited on film. So the 70mm print of Tenet, the standard 2.20 to 1 70mm print of Tenet, does not state that the negative was cut directly to create those prints, but it's possible that those were done simply by taking the central section of the IMAX negative and putting it straight onto 70mm and that would explain why that had a fabulous reception when it was released in 70mm and IMAX 70mm all over the world. So a bit of a relief there and it's restored our faith in cinema somewhat. But anyway I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please give it a like, a thumbs up and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to carry on producing videos like this again in the future. Until the next one, bye bye for now.